Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing two of my viewers' gotcha characters. Many of you have been requesting I do this again, especially since it's been quite a while since I last did this. I usually announce on my social media and stuff that I'll be doing this, but I kind of decided to do this at the last minute, so I chose from gotcha characters that have been submitted to me in the past. The first character I'm drawing is named Vess, and she is 16 years old. She is a bit arrogant and thinks highly of herself, but she also really cares about the people she's close with. She's a streamer and plays games late into the night. So let's start drawing Vess. Also, you may notice something a bit different about the chibi version of myself. I am now down in the corner and I kind of move when I talk. I found a program that's for creating PNG tubers and I wanted to give it a try. I thought it might be a fun extra element to include in my videos. You can let me know what you think of it. If it's not too hard or time consuming for me to incorporate, I may continue to use it. Anyways, about my sketch of Vess. In her description, it says she is arrogant and thinks highly of herself. So I decided to draw her in a kind of confident way. She has her hand up by her face and she's winking while also smirking. I really wanted to focus on her face and the hat, so I decided to draw a headshot for this picture. Now I'm on to my cleanup sketch. More recently, I haven't been doing much for finished illustrations. I've kind of just been doing quicker, more rough illustrations. But for some reason this week, I was in the mood to make fully finished art. So I'll be doing the line art and full rendering. I've been wanting to try some new rendering techniques, so I think that's why I wanted to go with full illustrations for these. I did intend to draw three illustrations for this video, but I ran out of time. That did bum me out a little bit because I was quite excited to draw the third character. I really liked their design. Maybe I'll draw them the next time I do this. Like I said, I kind of decided to do this at the last minute. I didn't give myself as many days to work on the art as I usually do. Uh, so yeah, that's why I didn't announce it on my community tab, Twitter, and Instagram, and all that stuff like I usually do. Uh, but from now on, I think I'll try to announce it in videos. Many of you have been requesting I announce in videos when I'm accepting OC or gotcha submissions, and I'll try to do that from now on. Also, if you want to know how to submit a character, there's info in the description on how you can. One part I did struggle with a bit was the brim of the hat. I don't draw hats super often, and I didn't have a reference for the specific view, so I was trying my best to figure it out. It took me a couple of times. I was mostly confused because we are slightly looking up at the character, but we aren't really low enough to see the total underside of the brim, but also not high enough to see a lot of the top of the brim. It was kind of an awkward view to draw, I eventually got something that I feel like looks okay. Now we are moving on to the line art. Instead of speeding through all of the line art, I'm going to show you some slower clips of the process. I always find these kind of satisfying, and I thought you all might like the slower footage as well. One thing I do like about having only two illustrations in a video is that I feel like I can show you more of the process and talk a bit more in detail about it, instead of just flying through all the details super duper fast. Like in my last I Draw Your OC video, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it, but cramming footage for four different drawings into one video means I really have to speed through things, and I can only talk about the more major parts. But since I'm only drawing two characters in this video, I can go a bit slower and talk more about the details of the process. In that video, I let a wheel pick which characters I draw, and for this video, I chose the characters myself. I kind of just wanted to pick characters that looked fun to draw or that I found interesting. Like for this character, I really liked her hat and her color scheme is quite cute. I thought she looked really fun to draw. Oh, also, I wasn't sure how I should position the marks on her face. On the gotcha character, one is to the side being partially covered by the hair, and the other is kind of in the middle of the cheek. I imagine they are supposed to be symmetrical, so I drew only the one on the left. In my head, the one on the right isn't in view, it's on the right side of her face. I'm explaining this because I didn't want to get comments saying I forgot the other mark. <laughs> I didn't forget it, I just feel like it should be on the other side of the face where we can't quite see it. So for the background, I wanted to keep it simple. I made some diagonal lines in a bright pink and added some cute stars with a pattern brush that I have downloaded. I think it gives the kind of fun and cute vibe I was going for. So now I'm applying some cell shading like I usually do, but this time is a bit different. So usually for my cell shading colors, I use kind of darker and desaturated colors. But this time around I wanted to experiment with using brighter, more saturated colors for the shading. 
I've seen some artists online do this and I thought it gave the art a very fun and bright feel and I wanted to try it for myself. For the warmer colors, I apply a bright pink set to the layer mode multiply. And for the cooler colors, I used a bright perimen cool kind of color. Oh, also, I decided to draw fingernails this time. I most of the time don't draw my character's hands with fingernails, but I thought it might be cute to have her nails be painted. And it also adds more color and makes the hand kind of more interesting. Since I often don't draw nails, I did find them to be a bit tricky to draw, but thankfully they didn't give me too much trouble. I kept looking at my own hand and how the nails kind of work, uh, so hopefully they look okay. Once my basic cell shading is in place, I start shading each individual part of the picture. Like right now, I am applying more shading to the skin. Once again, I'm trying to use more vibrant colors than what I usually go for. The shading is mostly applied with the airbrush. I change the softness of the airbrush depending on how hard I want the edges to be. For a lot of the face, I have it set to the softest setting. For the hands to kind of show the different edges of the fingers, I applied some shading around the middle point of the finger and made the shading fade out some. Once the shadows look how I want them to, I lower the opacity so it doesn't look super weird. <laughs> Next I add some highlights. I like to add some little ones to the nose and the lips, and I also add some around the chin. Something I also try to experiment more in this picture is adding variation in color to my shading. I think it looks really cool when the shading has different colors in it, and I found an easy way to add variation is to use the lock transparent pixel option. Basically, this button makes it so you can only draw on things that have been drawn on that layer. So if you want to change the color of things, this option makes it really easy because you won't color on anything else except for the things you drew on that layer. So to add variation in color, I lock the transparent pixels and go over with an airbrush set to different colors. Like I added pink to my blue shading on the hat and the sleeve. It's kind of subtle, so you have to look for it. <laughs> uh, but I tried to add different colors like pink and purple to the different shading. Because it's been a while since I last did a finished illustration with line art and full rendering, I kind of forgot how much easier it is working in a more clean and organized way. Like adding all of the base colors was so easy. <laughs> I didn't have to deal with weird little gaps and white spaces and the textured line art. Everything was solid and easy to work with. I also kind of forgot how much I like fully rendering things and adding all the little details. Like that part's kind of fun. Oh, also for the eyes, I tried something new. I learned this from Mogun's art class. I talked about it in this video. Uh, so Mogun adds a bit of the iris color in the lower part of the lashes. Almost like the color is being reflected from the eye to the lashes. I thought it looked kind of neat, so I wanted to try it. I do think it gives an interesting look and makes the eyelashes feel more detailed in a way. I might try to use it again in future illustrations. For the hair, I wanted it to be very shiny and include a variety of colors. For the highlights, I'm using the airbrush set to a hard edge and having it taper at each end. Then I just draw a bunch of strokes in a way that flows with the hair. For the color of the highlights, I used a mixture of pink and blue and had them kind of fade into each other in the middle. I hope it's okay. I did end up slightly changing the hair color. It was feeling kind of desaturated next to all of the other colors. So I upped the saturation of the color a bit. I didn't want the hair to feel dull. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's okay. It was just a subtle change. Lastly, I am changing the color of the line art to make it feel less harsh and kind of blend in with the rest of the colors. To do this, I clip a layer to my line art folder and I set the opacity to kind of low, maybe around 60% or so. And then I select colors from that picture and color the surrounding line art with that color. I lower the opacity so that the darker color of the line art still kind of comes through. Oh, I forgot about this part. <laughs> uh, so here I'm adding the camo pattern. At first I used a pattern from Clip Studio Paint, but it was really low res. So I kind of just used it as a guide and drew over it and kind of made my own pattern. Uh, so yeah, that's how I did the camo. And here's my finished picture of Vess. I had so much fun drawing her and coloring her. I'm really happy with how the brighter shading turned out and I want to try to use it more in the future. I think it looks neat and makes the picture feel very fun and vibrant. I think the colors really pop. The creator of this wanted to stay anonymous, uh, but thank you so much for letting me draw your character. I really like drawing her. The next character I'm drawing was created by Harry. 
Their character's name is Hiroto Sato. He is 23 years old and has fire powers that are harnessed from his emotions. The fire can come from his feet and hands, and that's why he usually wears flame-proof gloves and boots. So let's start drawing Hiroto. A detail that stuck out to me was Hiroto's fireproof gloves. So I thought I would draw him in a pose where he's interacting with the gloves. I was looking at different poses on Pinterest and I found this picture. I quite liked the pose, so I decided to draw something similar to this. Hiroto is 23, so I'm going to draw him looking a bit older than the usual characters I draw. A lot of the characters I draw are in their mid-teens, so to make Hiroto look older, I'll be drawing his eyes a bit smaller and higher up on his face. I'll also define his jawline a bit more, give him a thicker neck, and also make his proportions overall bigger. I picked to draw Hiroto because I liked his design and vibe. I also liked that he was an older character. I don't draw them as often, so I thought it sounded fun to draw him. Plus, he is a boy character. I haven't gotten to draw an illustration of a boy character in a while. I guess I did draw some boy characters in my six fan arts video, but those were all really quick drawings. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I wanted to draw an illustration of a boy character. I was a bit nervous while doing the rough sketch because I did not like how it was looking so far. Uh, but I decided to keep going hoping things would get better after the cleanup sketch. Sometimes my rough sketches are so rough that I do not like them. <laughs> uh, but you have to trust the process. Oh, so I have something that I'm kind of excited to announce. If you look down next to the subscribe button, there is a new join button. I have decided to open up YouTube memberships. If you become a member of my channel, you get access to behind the scenes content. You'll be thanked alongside my patrons at the end of my videos. You'll get access to an exclusive Discord server that's only for members and patrons. And you also get a discount code to my online store. Oh, you also get a fancy badge next to your name and exclusive emojis. I decided to open memberships because as I've mentioned in recent videos, my channel isn't performing as it usually does. My videos that I post each week are performing within their normal range, they aren't the issue. The reason why my channel isn't performing as it usually does is because my older videos are no longer generating as many views for some reason, and I'm not sure why this is happening. Uh, but because a lot of my older videos aren't generating as many views as they used to, this has kind of put my channel in a tougher spot, I suppose. Uh, so yeah. I'm basically just trying to find ways to diversify my income. Also, if you can't be a member, please don't feel bad. You being here and being a subscriber means so much to me. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you who watch my videos and enjoy my content. Like seriously, it means a ton to me and thank you for being here. I'm so happy you are interested in my art and that you take time out of your day to listen to me ramble on about art and random things. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about having the YouTube memberships. It's basically like my $5 tier on Patreon, but it's uh, now available through YouTube. Uh, but anyways, back to the picture. Uh, so as you can see, I'm trying out some different 3D models to help me get an idea for the background. I was going to go with this window with the blinds, because uh, I thought it looked kind of interesting. But after filling in the base colors, I didn't like that idea, and instead went with stained glass windows. Also, I got these from the Clip Studio Paint Asset Library. So, stained glass windows might seem kind of random, but I thought of them because of the cross necklace he is wearing. Crosses make me think of churches, and churches make me think of stained glass windows. Uh, so yeah. It might seem kind of random to have him be with a bunch of stained glass windows, but I also thought it sounded like a lot of fun to render, so I went with it. <laughs> I really wanted to add all of the light rays with different colors. My sister and I have talked about how we're kind of jealous of churches that have really pretty buildings. Our church is in a more modern building, so it doesn't have stained glass windows and all that stuff. But like the churches with stained glass windows are often really pretty. My uncle got married in this one church and it had a huge organ and it was really cool. I don't know why, but I kind of love organs and also accordions. Like in Hollow Knight, when I got to the Soul Sanctum and that organ started playing, I got so excited. And I love the music for that area a lot. I also got really excited when the one character that plays the accordion comes to the main town and he plays the accordion for you. I really like that part. <laughs> I was like, yay, an accordion. <laughs> uh, sorry for the random tangent, uh, but back to the artwork. So right now I'm adding highlights to the different parts of the picture. For the highlights on the lighter areas, I mostly use white. 
but for highlights on the darker areas I use more blues and purples. I often notice that things like rainbows when they are on lighter colors they will be more bright and not have as much color. It kind of depends on the rainbow. Sometimes they have a lot of color and sometimes they just kind of become white. Uh, but anyways, when rainbows go on darker colors, it's not as bright, but the colors look way more saturated. Uh, so I was kind of trying to do that with my highlights. The windows we have in our house are beveled and make rainbows. So I often study them and how they react with things. <laughs> in the morning time when I'm eating breakfast, I'll just be staring at all the rainbows and reaching my hand into the rainbows and kind of just studying them. For the shading of this picture, I did a mixture of cell shading, soft shading, and also blending out my shading. Because the lighting is a bit more complicated for this picture, I felt like I needed to have more transitions between darker and lighter areas. So I use the blending tool a lot more for this picture especially on areas like the clothes, the hands, and the gloves. I spent a good amount of time rendering the hands. I'm not sure why I felt the need to shade them so much, but I feel like they turned out nice. So the time I spent wasn't in vain. Uh, because this character is a male and he's in his early 20s, I decided to make the knuckles and veins be more prominent. I was trying to make his hands look more uh, masculine, I suppose. Also, in my head, I was thinking of the gloves as being a kind of thinner material, not super thick. Because of this, I made the wrinkles on the one hand kind of tiny, and there are a lot of them. Uh, but then when I zoomed out, I didn't like the way they looked. Uh, so I made the wrinkles a bit bigger and kind of blended some of them out uh, just to make it not look so weird. For the hair, I did a very similar process like I did for the previous picture. I used a mixture of colors for the highlights. To make them fade into the hair, I erase the edges with a soft airbrush and lower the opacity. Then to add more depth, I go in with a very dark color and apply shading around the different sections of the hair where I feel like the light wouldn't hit as much. Oh, also to make the hair feel less harsh, I added some skin tone to the hair around the face. It can help things to feel a little bit more cohesive and like it's not just like face and then hair. It helps it feel a little bit softer, I guess. Uh, so for the eyes, I wasn't totally sure what to do. The original eyes are kind of just white and I couldn't tell what was in the bottom of the eye. Uh, so I didn't add it. But because the eyes are just white, I decided to make them very bright and maybe look like they kind of glow. To help them feel less empty, I did add a slight indication of a pupil and add a little highlight later on. To make the glasses look like they have glass, I fill them in with white and erase some areas with a soft brush. I always like to fill in glasses this way. I feel like it looks kind of convincing, but it's also not like overpowering the eyes. It just gives a nice little indication of the glass. Last, we have the finishing touches. I blur out the background, add a gradient map to make the colors more cohesive, add some little floating particles, and we are done. Here's my picture of Hiroto Sato. I really loved working on the lighting for this picture. It was so much fun. And Hiroto is a really cool character, so I enjoyed drawing his design. Thank you so much to the creators of these characters for letting me draw them. Like I mentioned, I'll try to announce in future videos when I'll be doing another I Draw Your OC or I Draw Your Gacha character video. Uh, so please be on the lookout for that. Before we end, I want to say a big thank you to my super wonderful patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye.